Hi, Peter Dingle here, PhD. I'm not a medical practitioner, I am a researcher. And today I want to bring you part three of the great cholesterol deception, which is statin statistics and more lies. Now, statins, if you aren't aware, are the major drug and they often end on an or, okay? Um, they often, the last two words are an or, uh, they're, not, they're not the only way of spelling it, but they are the most common drugs given to people to lower cholesterol. Now, part one of this series was all about uh, how this myth was originally created. Part two was um, cholesterol isn't the bad guy. In fact, cholesterol is one of the best guys in your body and your brain and you need it. And playing with uh, pharmaceutical drugs to alter that is going to have some uh, uh, serious side effects, which we'll talk about in part four and five. But today it's about stats and people get confused with stats. And this is where we go wrong. Because the pharmaceutical industry has a, a huge vested interest, billions and billions and billions of dollars, to actually market something to sell to you so they make a profit. Now to do that, they do the research. They coordinate the research. They fund the research. They pay the people to do the research. They pay the participants. They pay the GPs actually doing the research. Um, the whole system is about paying people along the way to get the results you want. And I'm going to show you how they get the results. But I want to make it very clear. You've got the independent research and you've got the pharmaceutical research. And interestingly enough, the independent research comes out with these drugs having no benefit whatsoever. But even the pharmaceutical benefits research, the pharmaceutical company's research comes out and shows that the benefit is only 1% reduction in the risk of a heart attack and stroke, 1%, 1% in the risk of heart attack and stroke. And on top of that, though, there is no change in mortality rate. So that other 1% die of some other cause, usually one of the side effects related to these drugs. So why are we spending billions of dollars every year? And it comes down to what's called um, uh, how we look at the stats. And the first part of it is what's called st uh, statistical significance. Now, s when you and I hear significance, you go, wow, it must be good. It must be significant. It must be important. It must be of value. Well, in, in, in statistics, significance just means that there is enough evidence to show that it might work. Now, if it works 1% or half a percent or 0.1 of a percent, or it works 100%, it can still be statistically significant. So we've got a drug here that has a 1% benefit or a zero benefit or a 0.1% benefit, and it can still be statistically significant. So the doctors see this statistically significant, they go, ah, oh, it's statistically significant, it must be a value. Where we're getting confused is what we would call clinical significance. And clinical significance is what you and I and the GPs and all the medical people out there expect. So if you're going to take, um, let's say, to something to stop a headache, would you take it if it had a 1% benefit? The answer is no. Would you take it if it had a 20% or a 30%? Maybe. If it had a 50% benefit, yes, you'd take it. And this is where this whole concept of significance and so on goes crazy. Clinical significance is what you and I perceive that a drug is going to have an impact on you or I or the people around us and benefit us. And that's 20, 30, 40, 50%. Yet these drugs, the statins, are 1%. And the reason they're, they're actually 1%, I'll show you, and yet, and yet the medical staff are often saying, oh, you've got to take these drugs. They're, they're going to lower your heart attack or you can't come off these drugs because they're, you know, huge benefit, 30, 40%, is because of another what you what my a flaw in the statistical system, where in pharmaceutical and medical research they do what's called statistical sorry relative risk, and not absolute risk. Now you and I know what absolute risk is. Um, uh, if I'm crossing the road, the risk of me getting hit by a car is let's say one percent. Uh, the risk of me being hit by lightning is one in a million. Um, the risk. These are the things that we look at, the risk of me having being eaten by a shark, uh, you know, whatever, the, whatever it is, you know, 5%, 1%, 2%, 0 it doesn't matter. Whereas in, in science, in medicine, what they do is something called relative statistics, relative risk. And I'll give you an example. To me, it's like, let's say you've got 100 people over here who are taking the drug. And let's say three of these people have a heart attack. So, uh, you know, only 3%, 3%, okay, fine. Now you've got 100 people over here and they're not taking the drug and four have a heart attack. Now, you and I, under normal statistics, would say the difference between this one and this one is 1%, correct? Right, no, 
in relative statistics, they look at this and go, hold on, three compared to four, oh, there's a 33% increase, or a 25% increase would be a better number. There's a 25% increase. So all of a sudden, 1% in real statistical terms has gone from four, four um, to you know, uh, 25 or 30%. And that's the absurd thing about this. People are getting so confused about it. So the pharmaceutical rep goes in and literally brainwashes, with their good looks and all that, they brainwash the medical people to believe that they're talking absolute real statistics. So if you take that drug, the absolute best results ever that you can achieve with that pharmaceutical drug called a statin is 1%. It's going to reduce your risk of a heart attack by 1%. And that's only if you follow the... <laughs> the, the studies by the pharmaceutical companies. I'll give you another example. Um, one, of the, one of the big studies they've done, and um, in, in statins, you know, it's, it's all flawed because all the studies are in the 10, 20, 30, up to 90,000 people. And all the studies that they do show pretty well much the same. And there was a study that they looked at 20,000 people. And of that, right, 577 who took the drug had a heart attack. So group 577 had a heart attack. Uh, of the group that didn't have a heart attack, it was seven, sorry, who did have a heart attack, who didn't take the drug, was 701. So the difference between taking the drug and not taking the drug was a literally 124 lives saved. Now you might say, hold on, 124, that's pretty good. Well, have a look at the numbers though. To save 124 lives, they had to have 20,000 people taking the drug. Now work it out statistically, and you're about 0.5%. Now you can get that same benefit from taking some almonds, pistachios, nuts, fruit, veggies, all those, and much better, and they have no negative side effects, only positive side effects, like reduction of other disease, lower inflammation, lower oxidation, the real cause of heart attacks and strokes. Now where it comes to this is, all of, all of this evidence is up there, it's on the website, all you've got to do is learn to look at it. So I, I, in, my, in my book, I, I wrote this little section here, and it's and what it's got. Now I'll, I'll put it up there and try and explain it to you. If you can, if you can see those, uh, if you can see those numbers up there, I think you probably get a bit of a look there. And what it is, is this is when you take one of these drugs called Lipitor, and this is their own studies on their own website, and it shows you if you take that drug, the, then your absolute risk reduction is one point zero seven percent. Wow. Oh, let's celebrate! One percent. This is their own evidence that's on the website that's available for everyone to see. Now, one percent. So what they do then is they look at this and go, okay, there's, a, there's another number in statistics that's really important. It's called the number needed to treat. So how many people do you need to treat to stop one heart attack in this case? And it's 320. You need to treat 320 people in this to stop one heart attack. Do you see something wrong <laughs> with taking these drugs? They're so low. And then finally, it's got here that the relative risk, however, is 36%. So the pharmaceutical companies will educate the doctors, sorry, brainwash the doctors and say, well, if you, you, know, if you tell your patients if you have a, a what, take one of these drugs, there's 36% reduction in the risk of a heart attack. No, no, it's less than 1% to zero. And that's not even mentioning the side effects and all these other situations around. And of course, my biggest issue here is the fact that whenever you start telling people to take medication, they actually don't engage in healthy diet and lifestyle and changes that are gonna make a real difference. So that's what we're constantly advocating. So I hope you got the message through, but would you do this, do me a favor please, and share this because 20% of adult Australians are taking these drugs and they're not saving any lives. They're not saving any lives. Go to your GP and say, what is the relative risk? What is the absolute risk? Become informed. It's your health. Nobody else's. It's your life. And on the next video, I'll talk about some of the side effects of these statin drugs and how serious they are. So thanks for listening and share it.